Want to know more about the airy breed? Let's be new start ready with me right now. What's up? Dalcy Martel Vicente here providing you med remedy. Today, we will be talking about new start, specifically air. How it enters into the body, its components, and how we can improve the quality of air in our homes. Did you know you can survive for three weeks without food, three days without water, but only three minutes without air? That's how important air is. But how does air goes into the body? Kapag tayo po humina, the respiratory system takes in oxygen inside our body, goes into the blood, where the oxygen is carried into the cells. At kapag tayo po humina, when we breathe out, we expel carbon dioxide. Let's discuss this in more detail. So, na-mention ko po na meron tayong respiratory system. Ang ating respiratory system is divided into four main parts. The first part is our nose and our mouth, through which air enters. So, kapag huminga tayo through our air or through our mouth, doon po papasok ang hangin. Now, yung inside po ng ating ilong is called nasal cavity. Inside the nasal cavity, it's lined with mucous membranes that would humidify the air, warm the air, and maintains moisture inside the nasal cavities. Now, dun po sa loob ng nasal cavity, meron po tayong tinatawag na nose hair. Now, ano pong meron dito sa nose hair na to? Itong nose hairs na to po, it would help filter out components or particles from the air that would be harmful to our lungs. Ang purpose po ng nose hair is to block dirt and dust from getting inside the body. Bakit? Dahil po ang hangin ay hindi po siya pure na substance. Siya po ay binubuo ng maraming components at nakahaluan po ito ng dusts at iba't iba pang particulate matter. Ano-ano po yung mga yun? Una-una po is binubuo po ang hangin ng nitrogen, 78 to 79%. Release the effects of oxygen. They are very important in the growth of animals and plants. Then we also have oxygen. 21.1% essential in the lives of animals and plants for breathing. Then we also have carbon dioxide which is 0.03%. Absolutely essential po siya for photosynthesis which supports all life in the planet. Also, it, air is made up of water vapor or although yung composition niya is variable, it controls evaporation and climactic conditions as well as dust particles which are also variable nuclei for precipitation of rain water so yung nose hair po natin pinifilter niya yung mga components na ito bakit kasi hindi lang po iyon yung laman ng air syempre meron tayong mga kotse meron tayong mga sasakyan meron na po nahaluan po ito ng mga iba't iba pang component apart doon sa nabanggit ko kanina and these components, this particulate matter, can be harmful in our lungs after prolonged or long-term exposure. In the Philippines, most cases of non-communicable diseases such as allergies, acute respiratory infections, COPD, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases can be attributed to air pollution. According to the Department of Health, the top 10 leading causes of mortality and morbidity in 2008 were NCDs related to air pollution in chronic lower respiratory disease, heart disease, and pneumonia. So imagine nyo po, no, yung mga sakit na nabanggit, they are all related to air pollution. So the country's main air pollutants can be attributed to vehicles, yung mga sasakyan natin, or by area sources, ano-ano mga area sources yan, constructions, yung mga nag ng cemento, factories, unpaved roads sa dust, yung mga hindi cementadong daan, and then gasoline stations, and stationary sources such as factories and waste burn burning, according to the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Pero, yung po mga nabanggit ko, that's outdoor air pollution. Do you know that there's also a thing called indoor air pollution? Ano ba yung mga indoor air pollution na yan? Ito po ay ang burning fuels such as dung, 
wood, and coal in inefficient stoves or open hearths. It produces a variety of health-damaging pollutants, including particulate matter, methane, carbon monoxide, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, and volatile organic compounds. Bakit? Because kapag ka nagsunod po tayo ng wood, nagsunod tayo ng lung, ng charcoal or coal, it would emit particulate matter na napupunta sa baga and then they would cause irritation, inflammation, eventually damage sa lungs natin after long-term exposure. Another example, burning kerosene. Ano ba yung kerosene? Yung gas. Sometimes kapag ka mayroon pa tayong practices or habits na nagluto tayo using kalan. O kung hindi man kalan, we use kahoy. Pag nagluto tayo sa kahoy, we add gas. Although some indoor air pollutants are unavoidable, we can always do preventive measures and household practices that would reduce our exposure. How? Number one, do what our grandparents told us to do. Open our windows. Opening our windows would increase or improve good ventilation around the house. However, this is applicable only if your house or home is situated in an area where you are far from the road, there's a lot of trees, and there's wider space. Why? Because if you if you open the window and you're beside the road, you're exposed to jeepneys, you're exposed to motorcycles, you're exposed to trucks, then it's much better na wag na lang mong i-open yung pinto niyo. Bakit? You're much more exposed to carbon dioxide level. Also, if you're cooking, it's much better if you can use exhaust fan so that um, levels of nitrogen dioxide can be curved and it would not build up while you're cooking. Number two, don't smoke indoors or don't use candles. Bakit? Meron po tayong tinatawag na first-hand smoking, second-hand smoke, and third-hand smoke. No? The first-hand smoke would be from the user, second-hand smoke kung naamoy mo, katabi mo, non-smoker, pero nagsismoke ka, so na-expose sila. And then meron tayong tinatawag na third-hand smoke. Ito yung smoke na kumakapit sa damit, kumakapit sa pader, kumakapit sa mga bagay na nahawakan and this can also contribute to air pollution as well as what? It's also a carcinogenic substance. So, kapag ka -sm may smoker sa pamilya, tell them or encourage them to quit. Kung hindi makapag-quit, then tell them to smoke outside of the house. Number three, choose hard surface floors. As much as possible, uh, if, uh, kontian natin yung paggamit ng carpets at saka ng mga uh, fabrics on the ground. Kasi, uh, hard surface floors are easier to clean, pero kapag ka nasa carpet, mas mataas yung chance na dumidikit yung dust at dumidikit yung hair mo. So, mas mataas yung kapag ka nag-clean up kayo, you, are, you have higher exposure to those kinds of particulate matter. Number four, use a doormat. It's a culture in the Philippines na we always take off our shoes. That's a good thing, no? Kasi it's one of the uh, preventive measures in which na, uh, na reduce natin yung dust at saka yung ano ng particulate matter inside our homes. So we always have to use or place a bell mat in our doors so that our visitors, our loved ones who are from outside can use para mapagpag nila yung dust na yun. At hindi na nila madala sa bahay, sa loob ng bahay. Number five, reduce the use of cleaning products or air fresheners. Bakit? Cleaning products, ano po ba yung mga cleaning products natin na ginagamit? Usually kapag naglinis tayo ng CR, naglinis tayo ng uh, kusina. We use muriatic acid, we use sonrox, we use fluorine. Now, these kinds of products, kapag ka naka, nasa loob tayo ng isang closed space, for example, naglinis tayo ng bathroom, it has to be well ventilated. Bakit? This can accumulate at in certain levels, it is irritating to the airways. No? So, we have to reduce the use of those uh, those cleaning products. Apart from that, we also have to reduce the use of air fresheners, yung spin spray, at yung mga albatros na ipinapalagay na pang pabangang sa CR. Bakit? Because these products, they would always contain um, lemonins or organic compounds that in the long run may cause no, uh, health problems or irritate the air. So, kapag ka kayo ay may allergic rhinitis or kayo ay mayroong asthma, bawas-bawasan po natin. Air fresheners, these cleaning products, they are not required to list down the complete ingredients. So, hindi natin sure kung yung mga products na to would be safe for long-term exposure. 
So if you can opt for natural fragrances, that much better. You can schedule your your cleaning use of cleaning products from weekly, siguro twice, three, two to three times na lang siguro in a month. Hindi siya weekly, no? Or hindi rin siya every other day. Especially kapag masyado kayo masipag, you have to limit your exposure to these strong cleaning agents. And the last, number six, get some house plants. Studies by NASA and the University of York for the BBC both found that plants could reduce levels of formaldehyde in the home. So formaldehyde is a byproduct of combustion. Naguluto kayo through the use of wood or kapag gumagamit kayo ng uling sa inyong pagsasain or pagluluto ng ulam, mas maganda na you fill your house with house plants as they would decrease levels of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a byproduct of combustion or pagsusunog or burn. When burning natural gas, kerosene, gasoline, wood, tobacco, formaldehyde is produced. Tobacco smoking is another source of formaldehyde. So if you got a smoker or you're cooking your food through the use of wood or charcoal or you're using kerosene gas, much better po na mag-avail kayo ng house plants inside your home as they would mitigate or decrease the levels of formaldehyde in your homes. And there you have it. We discuss air as part of new start, how it enters the body, what are its components, and what can we do to improve the air quality in our homes. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share with someone who needs to know about it. For more videos like this, don't forget to visit my YouTube channel, Dalsi Vicente, providing you med remedy.